Hello, this is Luke Nichols with CaptainCarp.com. We're going to show you how to build a fish trap. This is a great way to get a lot of live bait for catfishing. Um, really convenient. Just pull the trap before you head out and you're good to go. So, without further ado, this is what you're going to need. Some uh, paracord and uh, you're also going to want some 4-inch zip ties and uh, the, some little small bungee cords. You can get this all from Home Depot. Of course, wire cutters some sharp ones ideally, a sharpie, and a tape measure, and of course you want some hardware cloth, this uh, wire mesh, um, and uh, what you do is first get some cardboard and draw a design. I Go and lay out two feet by two feet, and then mark the dead center of each side, okay, and then go and draw a little crosshairs right in the dead center and uh, you do eight and a half inches on either side of that triangle. So you put the point of the triangle right on the center line and then put eight and a half inches from the center line to the, to the side and it makes this clover leaf pattern. Uh, so you see you have eight and a half inches, you have uh, six inches on the edges, 24 inches across. Um, and then you go and you cut out a square. Okay, it's a two foot by two foot at, uh, at the square mesh. That's going to be the bottom or top. And then you take the, uh, the other mesh, uh, the rest of the roll of mesh, and you start zip tying it around the perimeter following the outline. So you have this box with the four triangles inside. And uh, just kind of zip line the, the corners first, and then come back in and add in more zip ties in between the corners. But uh, you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. And then you go and zip tie up the side, and you've made a complete loop, and you clip it free. And uh, you will do a lot of clipping. <laughs> um, and then uh, trim off all the zip ties. Uh, trim off all the tag and the zip ties after you've added all the zip ties you need. Um, now, one thing, if you want to buy one of these things, they're about $80 um, plus shipping. That seems like a lot of money, but it's also a lot of work. You can see here that you're putting zip ties in every uh, couple inches. Uh, you're going to do hundreds of zip ties and you're going to be clipping hundreds of uh, stuff. Probably a good four hours to make one of these things if uh, you're doing it for the first time. But if you do it this method, uh, uh, about four, maybe five hours, you end up with two of them. So you see here, this is what you got so far. And then you go and you clip out another two foot by two foot square for the top. And you zip tie one side, and or zip tie it up completely. And uh, you've got a two foot by two foot by two foot cube. Now this is a little bit too big. So this is, is why you end up making two of these things. You go and you, you find the dead center, so one foot, and you just clip it completely apart. So this will give you two separate traps that are two feet by two feet by one feet. Okay, and um, go and you clip off the two foot by two foot roofs, and then you clip off a two foot by one foot rectangle. And uh, you take this rectangle and you fold it into um, a box, a rectangle. A long skinny box okay and the the box will be uh, four inches by four inches by four inches and then you clip it in half and this gives you two of uh, two small boxes this is where you're gonna put all the bait so you shove that in the middle put the lid down you zip tie it in place so it doesn't flop around inside the trap okay and uh, in the end what you'll have up uh, here is after you've clipped all the zip ties and everything is you'll have a two foot by two foot by one inch uh, box with this rectangle in the dead center. Now what you do is you go ahead and on the point of the triangles on every side you cut it open. This is what's going to let the fish in. The fish come in along the side and the sloping sides direct it towards the center and the fish go in and then it's really hard to find its way out. Okay and so you kind of go and just clip out, out uh, clip right down the center and clip along uh, a couple inches along the top and bottom and there you go. Then you go and you clip out the top above one side of the little bait box 
and you install the bungee cord as a way of keeping the uh, the trap uh, the bait trap lid shut. Then in one of the corners, cut out a rectangle, a good size that you can reach in easily, um, a little bit bigger than the biggest bluegill you expect to find, and you loosely zip tie that chunk of mesh back on. This is going to make a little door that you secure again with another piece of bungee cord. And of course you tie on, on some paracord, give it uh, a good 12, 12 feet or so. Should do it. And uh, there you go. You've got a, a clover leaf fish trap or a four-way fish trap. These things are fabulous. They're really fabulous. Check your local laws though to make sure they're legal in your state. There's a lot of different rules about these. Um, and, and, uh, but some great bait. I've, I've uh, I heard about using uh, uh, onions and uh, bread and dog food and, and chicken, a variety of things as bait. Um, and so I've got some potato bread and some uh, slightly stale French bread in there and just kind of grabbing whatever I found in the kitchen. And then I chopped up an onion and, and put it in there as well. Um, at any rate, so. I kick this out and uh, 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 filled it up to the brim, and you really don't need to put that much bait in it. I kind of really overkill it. You can kind of tell this is my, my first time using it. Uh, you can do a third of that much bait. I mean, these are just bluegill. I mean, they don't have huge stomachs, so I mean, and they can't get out the bait because of the bait traps. So you just need enough to produce lots of scent. Anyway, I chucked it out for a 24-hour uh, soak and make sure you hide your rope. You don't want anyone stealing the trap. Um, but this is what I learned. Okay, first time I pulled this in, there were turtles all over it. I mean, this thing had uh, 13 oh turtles goodness. in it. A bunch of little painter turtles and Brian's turtles. They loved the onions. And the first thing I realized is the, the holes were way too big. Okay, so I went back and I zip tied the holes so that they, they can't flex open, so a turtle can't squeeze in. And so they're, they're one inch wide, which is really probably even wider than you need. That's about as uh, a very large bluegill, could, uh, a huge bluegill could still fit in there. But I put three zip ties in there to secure it so that it really couldn't flex open, so a turtle couldn't squeeze in. And I uh, and, uh, decided to give it another go. And so this time I, I would just put some bread and uh, some dog food in and some more of the, that uh, French bread. And uh, not a lot of dog food for a guy who doesn't own a dog. But anyway, <laughs> I put some dog food in there. Um, closed it up and I, I kicked this out to see if this wouldn't help get rid of the turtles and keep the turtles out. At any rate, this time I just did a 12 hour soak. And uh, once again, hid my line up really good so that I uh, wouldn't lose my trap. And uh, 12 hours later, it didn't do too bad. Um, about five, five nice size bluegill and uh, one turtle. And just one little little baby sized turtle. I think it might have been a baby snapping turtle, I'm not sure. but. You can see these are all good palm size bluegill. So I went from having no bluegill and tons and tons of turtles to just having one turtle. So I decided to see if I could do even better. So I'm a big carp fisherman. I took a bunch of this uh, green lip mussel carp boilies from Dynamite Baits, um, threw those in there to see, because the bluegill seem to always munch on those, and they're too big to get through the mesh. So I pulled the 12 hour soak in the same spot right after I pulled the trap before and uh, pulled eight bluegill and no turtles. So ditching the dog food, one, two, three, just four, having a little five, leftover six, bread seven, and switching out for uh, boilies. Um, the green lip mussel boilies did a really good job and they last forever in there. So you can see once again these are really great sized bluegill for, for uh, flathead catfish bait. These are, if you want live bait, this is the way to do it. So once again, and using this method, you make makes two traps, and uh, you set two of these things the day before you go fishing for flatheads, you're set. You're set. Anyway, thanks for watching. 
Here's some other videos <laughs> right, at CatsandCarb.com about how to get bait, and I think you might no. like them. So check it out, and uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.